Hello and welcome. I'm Barney Malecki, an Assistant County Executive Officer for Public Safety and the person responsible for the oversight of the selection of the retail cannabis outlets in the unincorporated area of the county. I'm joined today by my colleague Stephen Yee from the County Executive Office and Jeff Wilson from the Planning and Development Department. This informational video is designed to give you information in anticipation of the community plan area meetings which will be held starting July 1st, and I want to tell you a little bit more about that later. In today's video, we will introduce you to the process to tell you how applicants will be selected and how business licenses will be issued. We will also talk about the permitting process and how you can go about getting the required licenses and permits. We will give you the dates and times of the community outreach meetings, how you can participate and then planning and development will give you a more detailed look at the six community plan areas. It is our hope that this video will help you to frame the conversation and question and provide questions for the meetings that are forthcoming. I think it's important that we emphasize that the purpose of these meetings and indeed the, any activities over the next couple of months will not be directly focused on selecting specific sites. Rather, they're to get community input on what is important uh, in the selection of a site, general concerns such as parking and traffic and other kinds of community issues, how the neighborhood score sheet will re be reviewed by the Board of Supervisors on August the 18th, and all of this with your input. In addition to attending this community meeting, you can post your questions in advance, or you can go to our website at cannabis.countyofsb.org. Again, that's cannabis.countyofsb.org. And there you can find a copy of this video, link to information and maps, ways to participate and submit questions and comments, both in writing and by phone, and how to attend the virtual community meetings. I want to remind you that there are six designated community plan areas. That, and these were each authorized by the Board of Supervisors to have a maximum of one retail outlet per community plan area. And now we're going to give you more detail on the application process, as well as a map uh, of, in more detail of the, of the area itself. And with that, I'm going to turn you over to my colleague, Stephen Yee. Thank you, Mr. Malecki. And good afternoon, constituents of Santa Barbara County. My name is Stephen Yee, and I'm a fiscal and policy analyst with the county's executive office. I also serve as the coordinator of the county's cannabis business licensing function. The objectives of my portion of today's presentation are twofold. One, to provide an overview of the county's merit-based cannabis retail storefront selection process, and two, to detail the county's cannabis business license application submittal requirements and associated review process. The county's merit-based retail storefront selection process commences with an application that requires the following elements. An application deposit fee, all, require, all requirements as stated in the business license ordinance chapter 50, except for live scans, a seller's permit, and an issued land use entitlement. A business operations proposal is required and so is a neighborhood compatibility plan. Upon submittal of the application package, staff will perform the following initial reviews. The County Executive Office will review the application package and perform a review for overall completeness. And the Planning and Development Department will perform a review to ensure that the proposed operation location is properly zoned. If any portion of the application is incomplete or the proposed location is not properly zoned, a notice of non-acceptance will be issued to the applicant and the application will not move forward for further processing. If the application is deemed complete and properly zoned, the application moves on to the next phase of review and scoring. This second phase consists of a review of the Chapter 50 requirements. This review is conducted by the business licensing team and the resulting scores are assigned a 25% weighting factor. The second component of this phase is a review of the business operations proposal conducted by a third party evaluator and is assigned a 75% weighting factor. Aggregate scores of 85% or higher move on to the next phase of review and scoring. Those applicants achieving a score of less than 85% are, 
are noticed and will not move forward in the selection process. And finally, phase three of the selection process consists of review, scoring, and forced ranking of applications by community plan area. This will be conducted by an internal selection committee on the following two components. Chapter 50 requirements weighted at 10% and the neighborhood compatibility plan weighted at 90%. Applicants achieving the highest score in each community plan area will be allowed the opportunity to apply for a land use entitlement and must also submit a complete cannabis business license application. Next, I would like to detail the cannabis business license application submittal and review processes so that the public has a thorough understanding of the rigorous requirements and review process that our board has adopted. At a high level, cannabis business licensing allows for an inquiry into the fitness of the proposed entity and all individuals associated with the business, including owners, managers, supervisors, and employees. A business license is required for any person or entity who intends to engage in a commercial cannabis operation in the county. A business license must be obtained prior to commencement of business. However, an exception has been made for those legal nonconforming cultivators who are operating under the state's medicinal laws prior to January 2016. Further, any person or entity seeking or possessing a cannabis state license must obtain the corresponding county business license. Cannabis business licenses, once issued, are valid for a term of one year. A final, unappealable, approved and issued land use entitlement is required prior to issuance of a business license. For any changes in ownership greater than 10%, a new business license application must be submitted. And finally, cannabis business licenses, once issued, are non-transferable. For the Cannabis Business License Ordinance, the Cannabis Business Licensing Team has been assembled and consists of county departments and one outside agency that have been assigned review responsibilities relating to the review of submitted license applications. The departments that make up the licensing team are as follows. The Agricultural Commissioner, County Executive Office, County Fire, Carpinteria Summerlin Fire District, Environmental Health Services, which is a division of the Public Health Department, Planning and Development, Sheriff, Sustainability, which is a division of the Community Services Department, and the treasurer tax collector. The application content that operators are required to submit and that which our licensing team reviews is as follows. Background and contact information, which includes all applicant and agent names and contact information. The name and contact info for all business owners, managers, supervisors, employees, and persons having a 10% or more financial interest in the entity a 24-hour contact name and phone number in case of any complaints that need addressing. Government issued ID for all owners, managers, supervisors, and employees to verify that all individuals meet appropriate age requirements. And the entity name, address, and license numbers for all other commercial cannabis operations currently being operated or previously operated by the applicants. We also gather the following information on the operation. A full description of the proposed activities and products, proposed hours of operation, the total number of employees, the physical address and assessor's parcel number, a property and premise diagram, and evidence of the authority to operate, which consists of either proof of ownership of that premises, or if rented or leased, written permission from the property owner authorizing the tenant or lessee to conduct commercial cannabis activities at the site. And this authorization must be notarized. Additionally, applicants must provide the following state information. Copies of the applicant's state licenses or applications. Quantity and type of state licenses that will be required for the proposed operation. A state seller's permit or evidence that the applicant is applying for one. And as mentioned previously, an issued land use entitlement is also required. As for business entity requirements, the applicant must provide the name and contact information for the business entity, the entity's legal status, and proof of registration with the California Secretary of State. 
Applicants are also required to submit other supporting documentation, such as a quality control plan. This plan must address procedures on how the applicant will comply with state standards for non-contamination. Additionally, applicants must also submit an inventory control plan to demonstrate the ability to, the ability to track the location of all cannabis product and be able to reconcile inventories with the records in the track and trace database, which all operators must comply with. There are also requirements that must be met regarding site security plans and background checks. The site security plan elements that applicants must address are as follows. A perimeter security system including fencing, locks, and alarms, motion activated perimeter exterior lighting, an alarm system maintained by a licensed company with central monitoring capabilities, and a video security system with 24-hour monitoring. Applicants must also identify limited access areas and associated protocols, as well as an employee training plan. Lastly, applicants must identify professional security personnel, which is a requirement for all retail storefront licenses. Criminal background checks are required for any individual associated with the cannabis operation. All owners, managers, and supervisors are required to go through a live scan background check conducted by our, our sheriff's office that discloses no felony convictions. For employees, it is incumbent upon the business entity to perform background checks on all employees and to retain the results. For any individu individual that successfully passes the background check, the sheriff's office then provides an ID card that must be worn at all times when on site at the cannabis operation location. Again, per the business license ordinance, each department or agency of the licensing team is assigned specific review responsibilities for a given application. Generally, the licensing team reviews the license application and supporting documentation they also visit the operation location to conduct site inspections. Once each department or agency approves of their review portion of the license review process, the county executive office may provide recommendation of license issuance to the treasurer tax collector's office. The treasurer tax collector then performs a review of the applicant's cannabis tax status, and if no delinquencies exist, may produce and issue the license. Again, once a license is issued, it is valid for one year. For the business license ordinance, a licensed operator must submit a renewal app application annually. The review of a renewal license application consists of the following reviews by the licensing team. A review of odor complaints and responses to those complaints in compliance with the county's zoning ordinance. Review of the renewal application and supporting documentation. And lastly, site inspections. In addition to the annual renewal requirement and the associated review process, the licensing team performs ongoing compliance checks throughout the term of the license to ensure compliance with the business licensing ordinance. The licensing team has established compliance check schedules to perform these mid-year visits. And finally, for the business license ordinance, county officials and staff may inspect the cannabis operations records, books, accounts, financial data, and any and all data relevant to its license activities for the purpose of conducting an audit or examination. And with that, I'll turn the presentation over to the Planning and Development Department to present the permitting process and to review each community plan area. Hello, my name is Katherine Lair. I'm a supervising planner with the Planning and Development Department. Cannabis storefront retail businesses need to obtain a land use entitlement through the Planning and Development Department. The next few slides will provide an overview on where storefront retail locations can be located, the planning permit process, what happens when you're through the planning department, as well as an overview of each of these community specific areas. The County Land Use and Development Code defines cannabis storefront retail as the retail sale and delivery of cannabis or cannabis products to customers, which is also referred to as a storefront retailer. That's what I'm gonna be using throughout this presentation. A retailer shall operate from a licensed premise, which is basically the physical location from which commercial cannabis activities are conducted. A retailer's premise may be closed to the public and they can also conduct some sales by delivery. 
We'll go over this in detail in the coming slides. For our presentation, we divided the county into three areas to align with our existing ordinances, the inland area, coastal area, and Montecito area. Storefront retail projects located in the inland area are allowed in most commercial zone districts, as well as manufacturing with the land use permit. Similar in mixed use zone district areas, cannabis storefront retail businesses are allowed with a major conditional use permit. I'll provide an overview of the land use permit process in the next slide. Projects located in the coastal area requires a coastal development permit and are only allowed in the C1 and C2 zone districts. Our ordinances do not allow cannabis storefront retail to be located with the Mon within the Montecito area. And although storefront retail can be permitted in all the zone districts listed above, there's other locational criteria that may limit the location of a cannabis storefront retail business. For example, cannabis retail businesses cannot be located within 750 feet from a school providing instruction in kindergarten or any grade one through 12, daycare or youth center. This slide provides an overview of the land use permit and the coastal development permit processes. Once the applicant meets the applicable requirements under business license review, the operator then submits an application to planning and development. Planning and development staff reviews a project for conformity with all applicable zone district requirements and development standards. Certain applications will need to be reviewed by other agencies such as fire department, environmental health services, even Caltrans, et cetera. Once an application is complete and ready for a decision, the department will notify all owners and residences within 1,000 feet of the area and all interested parties of the pending decision. The mailed notice includes information on how to appeal a decision as well. Once the department makes a decision on the application, meaning it can be approved or denied, a 10 calendar day appeal period follows. Generally, the department's goal for making a decision on a cannabis project that requires a land use permit or coastal development permit is three to six months. The permit process for a conditional use permit is very similar, except that this type of permit requires a public hearing and some additional findings focused to ensure neighborhood compatibility. As detailed in the prior slide, staff will review the application for conformance with all applicable zone district requirements and development standards and obtain required clearances from other agencies. Noticing for conditional permits, conditional use permits, will be sent to all owners and residents within a thousand feet and all interested parties. This notice will include a scheduled hearing date as well as information on how to appeal a decision. For these types of permits, the department's general goal is six to nine months to make a decision and take an action. So now, um, post-approval requirements. If the department approves a project, there are post-approval requirements, which include permit compliance, submittal for building permits, if alterations are needed. And additionally, approved cannabis storefront retail businesses will need to obtain a county business license from the county executive office. Stephen Yee has already gone over the details of that process. Now we will take a look at each community plan area. Each of these are linked separately for your convenience. 